The Satisfy Grand Sport Challenge idea is to improve virtually every component on this Z06, and now we're going to deal with brakes, which I'm going to use to kick your butt. Well, you're going to need it, because remember the initial bet? Stuart said that if you lose, you're going to wear a miniskirt, and I got the nicest little unit picked out for you. Oh, you went shopping, <laughs> did you? Wait a minute, what do you get to wear if you lose? Here's the irony of the whole thing. When Stuart made the bet, he never said I had to do anything if I lost. <laughs> When Dream Car Garage contacted MTI Racing about doing this project, we were super excited about all the new products and components that you could bolt on your new C6 Z06. So whenever it came to the brake section, there was absolutely no question. The number one choice in the world for brakes is Brembo. And Brembo North America was good enough to get us the very first set of this 14-inch, six-piston monoblock caliper from Brembo North America. I can't wait to get a satisfied brake pad in this thing and see what this baby will do out on the track. With the Brembo brake package, they've supplied us this 14-inch rotor. The 14-inch rotor comes with a floating pin arrangement. What the floating pin does, if you see the little spring clips behind the bolts there, what that allows it is under heavy braking that the rotor can float slightly, move around and make adjustments so that you don't have, a have to have a floating caliper. It keeps everything in alignment and happy. So whenever we do a brake upgrade on a car, we always take extra time to look and make sure that the fit and finish of all the parts and the pieces and components are engineered and properly designed to go on the car. Even with a system of a high caliper like a Brembo system, we still look at very critical areas like rotor contact. Is the rotor spaced equidistant from the center so that the pad and the rotor are not gonna contact the inside of the caliper? It's those attentions to detail that is the reason why you'd wanna take this thing to a professional to have your brakes installed. Whenever you have a production assembly that doesn't have a floating rotor, doesn't have a floating caliper, something's got to move around because it has a multiple piston arrangement. Six pistons, you got to have something that gives, so GM decided to put six individual padlets. Well, what Brembo has done is that they've gotten away from the little bitty padlets and gone to a big beefy pad, and they have a two-piece rotor arrangement. The two-piece rotor arrangement still can move around because it has a pin and bobbin drive that allows the thing to move around slightly and give them the floating arrangement that they need so that the brake system doesn't have any bind. Time to continue with the satisfied Grand Sport Corvette. The Probably the most iconic thing about a Corvette is the transverse leaf spring. And you're taking it out so you can go faster. I think that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's talking about cheating. Well, Reese Cox actually thinks it does go faster and he's proved it on several occasions, so we're gonna go for the full treatment. When it came time to develop the suspension package for this car, we relied heavily on our World Challenge C5 Corvette experience. From there, the stopwatch was the ultimate judge of what was the right components to use in our suspension kit. From that, we dialed it back a couple of steps for something that's tolerable for the street. On our coolover shock arrangement, we use a mono ball and we change from a stud mount to a mono ball assembly so that what it does is that using a mono ball instead of using the stud style, it eliminates all the side loads in the shock and the spring assembly so it lets the thing go through its range of motion without any friction. What we had Penske do for us is build an adjustable shock that uses one adjuster to adjust both the compression and rebound. So what that gives you is it gives you a shock that's adjustable, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to learn how to make it stiffer or softer and not lose your way when you're trying to make chassis setups either at the racetrack or to dial it in for the street. By going to our Penske coilover setup, the car becomes truly four-wheel independent. When you have a transverse leaf spring, the springs, even though they can connect to only one wheel, they're still somewhat interconnected because of transverse leaf spring goes across the car. But by going to a coilover setup on each corner, each corner is truly independent of each, of each other. One of the most important final components of the suspension system is the tuned high rate sway bars. The advantage of our sway bars is that they're a higher rate than stock, but they're not so rigid and stiff that they'll cause an incredibly horrible ride on the street. So they actually are very tolerable on the street. We've done a complete suspension makeover on this car, and at MTI Racing, once we've completed a suspension install of a major upgrade like this, the first thing that we do is we pull the car onto a nice flat surface, we baseline everything, our corner weights, as you can see, we've got the corner weight pads here. What that does is it measures the force exerted at each of the four corners of the car. When you do suspension, it's absolutely critical that you get the setup proper, and by doing that, the car behaves much more neutral and much more balanced, and you can notice that behind the wheel. 
Now we've baselined this car at the shop to be pretty close, so we're not having to do major adjustments here because we've done this so many times. We know about what the car likes, but to verify all of our settings, what we've done is we've gone back and we've rechecked all the corner weights, we've re-verified re all the ride heights, and now we're making subtle adjustments to get the car dead on perfect. A splitter and a spoiler really not that useful on the street, neither are brake ducts, but all three of these things combined to actually help this Corvette at high speed. You're good at high speed, why do you need this stuff? keep the car sucked down, but the beauty of this is, is we're going to Dunville, you're not gonna get out of third gear either, so all this is useful, so I'm still gonna beat you and you're gonna be wearing the skirt. But it looks good. Wait till you see the wind tunnel footage about this car. 200 miles an hour is a very cool threshold for someone to accomplish, and I said, that's what we gotta do. We gotta go run 200 miles an hour in a Corvette. So we took one of our cars with a 427 in it, and we thought, hey, we'll go blast at 200 miles an hour, no problem. We can only run 180 miles an hour. So we went back to the shop, we rebuilt, we slicked in the front, we sculptured the nose, we took the mirrors off, we put more horsepower in the engine, we came back, and with a lot of horsepower and slick aerodynamics, we got our car to run 202 miles an hour out the East Coast Timing Association, and man, that was a blast. So we came up with a two-piece carbon fiber aerodynamic package, which is awesome. It takes the lift count from 220 counts of lift to 240 counts of downforce. That's a change of 460, but it only came at the penalty of 40 counts of drag. That's 460 downforce versus 40 counts of drag. That's like an aerodynamic free lunch. The cool thing about our carbon fiber front splitter is if you look and you notice the contours of this part, it is all just like the OE factory front fascia, so the thing bolts right up in the stock location. The second design feature that is awesome about this thing is that we got the brake ducts built right into the lower portion of the front skid pad. Also, the third thing which makes it a structural piece of the car is that we've got these aluminum billet hard points in here. This actually bolts up to the lower frame of the car and allows the thing to take a few whacks on the front without it ripping it off the car. Makes it a nice, structural, sturdy piece. The second part of our aero package is probably the most important element. It's the rear spoiler. Even though it's a simplistic looking, lightweight little device, the thing greatly contributes to the overall downforce of the car. The install of our rear spoiler is really quite simple. We use the factory bolts in the factory locations and a light adhesive on the outboard side to give a nice firm base to the structural foundation of the spoiler. And then in the wind tunnel, it's really awesome to see. When we were doing smoke trail testing, you can see the smoke trail actually come up and off of the back of the rear spoiler. And in the wind tunnel, if the smoke goes up, the car goes down. We're going to continue with the Satisfied Grand Sport Corvette Challenge with a bunch of stuff that's bolted inside the car. Not just to make it safer, but actually to keep you positioned behind the wheel. Let Peter tell you about a strap that's named exactly after him. <laughs> what? The dick strap? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, it keeps the belts where they should over your broad shoulders, keep you in the seat. <laughs> but it's called a dick strap for no apparent reason. And what do you call the shifter? Okay, so we got this total concept car going. It's time to move into my office where I'm getting the work done. I want things inside that car that are gonna make me comfortable as a race car driver. I wanna be able to feel the gear shift. Nice, smooth, crisp, precise shifts. The steering wheel, I wanna be held in position. I don't wanna be flopping around, flailing around in the car. We got a brake cross harness bar across the back. That thing is really cool because it installs with no interior modifications. You can actually completely remove it from the car, put the interior back completely stock, which is awesome. For the restraints in our track cars, we use the G-Force cam lock assembly. The G-Force cam lock assembly adjusts easily, it extracts easily, it's got pull-up straps so it'll let you get out of the car. Next time you get ready to buckle in, the things are already in position, things ready to rock and roll. Whenever we install a safety harness system, I love using these little snap hooks. They clean up the install and they really make it nice for the interior so that you can remove the, the seat belts and they allow you to get inside underneath the seat so that you can vacuum out the interior. Plus you can completely remove them nice and fast. Starting back from the days of racing the C5, we were constantly working on a shifter that provided all the qualities that we wanted. We've probably gone through 20 different versions of shifters. MTI Racing's now got a version of shifter that's awesome. It provides clean, fast shifts has low shift effort and is awesome. And I think the owner's gonna feel a dramatic improvement in the way this car shifts and drives. We're at the very last step now on our Satisfied Corvette Challenge car before the big showdown with Peter. Now, Stuart Kahan from Satisfied got involved in this step. He really likes this particular HRE wheel. We've gone with a Michelin tire. 
But what about wheel size and dimension along with tire size and dimension? It's actually a no-brainer because we've relied on MTI Racing for that and Reese Cox. In fact, we've relied on MTI Racing and Reese Cox for every step along the way. He's tested all the parts and he knows this combination is going to work. You know, it is absolutely amazing how much of the Corvette community allows Cox to think for them. Well, today is the day we're doing the Satisfied Corvette Challenge. Remember at the beginning of the season when Stuart Kahan said he could build a Z06 or have Tom build a Z06 that's going to beat this L88? It wasn't going to happen. Well, I know Tom, remember two years ago, we did the Mustang Shelby Challenge and he cheated. Bigger motor, bigger brakes, any way he could, he cheated and he ended up winning it. And he's being real smug, but this year I had Reese Cox come to my shop, so I know he's not cheating. Now, what is he doing? What are you doing? I know you're cheating. You're smiling too <laughs> I'm much. Not cheating. Must be the working too well. MTI Racing did a great job. Let's just leave it at that, and let's go ahead. How up. did you do it this time? We've had Reese in my shop. I didn't see anything goofy getting bolted on, <laughs> and you're smug. <laughs> Nothing is untoward. This is just a simple MTI conversion of a Z06. Okay, if that's the case, remember the Sail original the bet. <laughs> remember the original bet? I bet you that Tom and I can beat you, and if you beat me, Tom will look good in the miniskirt. You're not even worried. I'm not worried about it. Besides, you gotta wear this for a hat, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Absolutely straight up. This Corvette, which is good, everybody knows that. This Corvette, straight up. I'm not kidding. There's no way you're gonna win this. <laughs> <laughs> you're too cocky though, well, aren't you? Let's just get it done, all right? I'll go get my helmet, you go I'll get yours. I'll get mine. Well, of course I'm cheating. You've gotta assume that Clute is cheating, putting maybe rocket fuel in the thing or something. But it's very important to me that I win. Come to think of it, it's very important to me that I don't wear that skirt. So, I can't cheat any more with the car but I do have a trick up my sleeve. Trick up his sleeve? That's going to be a big trick, isn't it? Look at the size of his sleeve. Tom, come on, quit stalling, let's go. All right, here's the trick. He's won at Le Mans, he's won at Daytona overall, he's won at Sebring. In fact, he's won a couple of ALMS championships. In fact, he's the winningest Corvette driver in the world. Peter, have you ever met Ron Fellows? <laughs> Ron, right. have you ever watched Pinks? No, no, you know no. where they negotiate lengths? Straight up, we said straight up. We did. Yeah. But... No, so you're gonna do I knew fine. you were going to get me fine. one way or another. Ron, I'll be in the timing stand. Do your best, will you? Hey, thanks. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Stuart Kahan from Satisfied Brakes arrives in great style. Usually, this time, he arrives in his own private airplane. Well, here's the deal. Five laps, standing start. This might be close. The thing is, I've got all the horsepower, 700 plus, but he's got all the talent. Well, I think we got a pretty good ride here. I'm favoring the Z06, especially on this track. And we don't want to see Tom wear a skirt. And I don't want to wear one either. <laughs> From the Timing Tower, we're watching this five-lap showdown between the Z06 and Peter's SVRA Corvette. From the standing start, the Z06 gets away first. No doubt about it, though, the SVRA car has some horsepower, and Peter's not afraid to stick his nose in. Oops, perhaps too much horsepower, as Peter has trouble putting the power down now. But when it comes to braking, it's not even close. Ron Fellow's experience in the superior brakes in the Z06 make short work out of the SVRA Corvette.
after five laps, Ron might just have gone fast enough to win, but that's a secret that only he'll know. I knew it. <laughs> I knew I could beat you, you, you loser. Get out of that car. I'm going to spank you with this thing. <laughs> you and Nachu had this plan right from the beginning, didn't you? That's ya? right. That's didn't right. <laughs> finally, finally somebody beat you at your own game. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good job. And just for that, we knew what Tom was going to do if he was going to lose. Well, now that you've lost. Hang on, hang on. I thought there was no penalty for me. No, 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 no. There's a penalty. As a result of you losing, you're taking us to Europe. All expenses paid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> I knew I was going to get burned. <laughs> well, if you have to lose to somebody, there's no better guy to lose to than Ron Fellows. But let's face it, MTI Racing did a dynamite job building this car. We went to coilovers with Penske shocks. We did the big Brembos. We got the rim and tire. We did the Callaway airbox. We did a fair number of modifications, but they're pretty decent out of the box, huh? The, the regular Z06 is plenty of car, and, and you know it's it's a uh, um, the C6 Z06 is is quite a departure from the regular production uh, C6 uh, between the, the seven liter motor and it's got some of the titanium bits that we use in the race car, the rear transaxle, uh, the carbon hood, carbon fender. So it's uh, it's a it's a lot of car. It's a nice lightweight piece and uh, goes like stink. And then there's this one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good race car. Like I said, I should have beat him. If it weren't Ron driving, I think I would have beat Tom, but hey, good job. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. <laughs> well, in the last couple of years, lapping days have become hugely popular and for good reason. Let's face it, the highways are just overcrowded. You can't do 180 miles an hour anymore like we did on the Autobahn, but here at the racetrack, you can absolutely do that. The only problem with that is there's always some meathead that thinks he's faster than you. Oh yeah, well faster is one thing, but how about more resourceful, more clever, more creative? <laughs> you can win a race in a lot of different ways. I choose not to do it myself. But one thing that Peter's correct about, if you race in the street, you're a moron. You're taking not only your life into danger, but you're taking the lives of so many other people into danger as well. And besides, what kind of a genius do you have to be to go 150 miles an hour in a straight line? Smarter, more resourceful? All you did is had Ron Fellows come out and kick my ass. Now let's see if you can do it. We got a nice little Viper here, brand new. You got your famous Z06. <laughs> and and see... no Ron Fellows today, I hope. <laughs> and we'll see who does better at the end of the day. You just keep your head up, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> we started this lappy day a few years back because we had uh, bought our dream cars and found out that driving our dream cars was more of a nightmare than a dream on our provincial roads. So we started doing this lapping day because it's a lot safer and a lot more fun to be driving on a track than it is on the roads. Anybody can drive 160 miles an hour on the highway. It's a lot more challenging, a lot more rewarding to be doing 80 miles an hour in a corner than it is to be driving full out on a highway. And it's a lot safer too. What, what does it mean having Dream Car Garage? It's great for us to have them here. It's great to see them. They're a lot nicer on TV than they are in person. <laughs> Where'd you get your car from? Oh, it's just, just a buddy of ours who uh, decided that he'd like to see his Z06 on TV, beating you in a brand new Viper. Where'd you, where'd you get your car from? I got mine from the manufacturer. You know the difference between getting one from a buddy and a manufacturer? What? Let me show you. Okay. He likes to manufacture his cars because he picks them up full of gas and he can take them back empty. Don't you wish you got yours from a manufacturer? <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, what's with the donuts? Victory donuts. It starts. Now here's the ironic thing, is I tell Tom that we're gonna run the SRT-10, the Viper, against the Z06. What I didn't tell him is we're gonna run an 08. And if anything, this thing is probably the best car Chrysler's has ever produced as far as a track vehicle. 600 horsepower, the thing is just incredible. Everything is bigger and there's more of everything. I got my work cut out for me here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get him. 
Let's see if we can shorten this distance a little bit in five. Yeah, maybe I know what trick he doesn't know. Okay, Nachu, hang on, because I'm going to open up a little can of whoop-ass here. Watch you. Bye-bye.